Hello Space Fairies! My comic collection! It has grown! I've recently found myself in the reasonably dangerous position wherein I can't go into Forbidden Planet or gosh comics in Soho without actually buying something. I've never thought of myself as someone who actively collects stuff until I a took a very long hard look at how many hairbands I own, it's this many, and b took a look at how impulsively and compulsively I buy graphic novels. But anyway, all that aside, I have picked out a couple more of my recent favourites to share with you. And the first one is... Missing. Where is it? This is Moonstruck by Grace Ellis and Shay Beagle. Very briefly, it's about a college campus town that is populated by mythical, legendary beings, two of which the main characters being lady werewolves who strike up a romance. I don't know what else I need to say to sell this to you, but... It's very magical in a emotional way, but also in a literal there is magic kind of way. There is a non-binary centaur, there is a gay couple of werewolves. This character is a mystic and she can see into the future and she is adorable. And the heroine is plus sized. There is a plus sized gay heroine who is also a werewolf with anxiety. And also it's very easy going. There's obviously some conflict, there's like minor mystical peril, but also it just captures really nice trivial moments within friendships and I guess campus college life. And look how soft the colouring is. Look at this palette, it just it matches everything in my room. So that's Moonstruck. I cannot recommend it enough and I can't wait for there to be more. Next up we have Moon... Ow! <laughs> Moon Cop by Tom Gold when it's not fighting me. I love Moon Cop. This is definitely the one on my shelf that kind of stands out style-wise, as you can probably see. Tom Gould really is just a remarkable illustrator because he manages to convey really meaningful ideas and the complexities of humanity and human experience with just the bare minimum of visual detail. And just like the sparsity of the dialogue within the entire book speaks volumes. Because more than anything, this is kind of a short story about isolation and companionship and adjustment. It's such an honest human story. It just happens to be set on the moon. And this small, really heartfelt story just encapsulates the loneliness of smaller outlying towns. And also how technological advancements may be removing the humanity from the human condition. And I love it because I love space a lot, as you probably know by now. Hello. Have you come to talk about comic books? Hello. You're upside down. Cool, thank you for clawing at my face. Oh, I love it when you claw at my face. What? So speaking of space and very complex emotions, have you read Everyone's an Alien When You're an Alien too? I have to assume most people have because it's something of a phenomenon. Written by absolute Twitter sweetheart at Johnny Sun. Everyone's an alien follows the emotional journey of a visiting alien as he learns about life on Earth. It's ridiculously existential and it seems like one of the running themes of the book is actually what Johnny the alien values as information worth learning. And that is especially compared to his alien colleagues who do not agree about the stuff that Jomney should be learning about life on Earth. In his appreciation of just all things Earth, Jomney delights in communicating with and learning from a tree and an anxious egg and a dog that only experiences happiness. And also he communicates with the concept of nothingness itself in all of its kind of surface silliness and nonsense. It is one of the most compellingly truthful and emotionally pure books I have ever read. Because whilst the things that Jomney, the alien, chooses to learn are not things that are necessarily based in what we understand as scientific fact, they are instead based in ideas and humanity. A humanity which is expressed in the book through every single thing except humans. Humans never come into it. And I think that probably is what I do love most about this book. The intimacy of an entire life of thoughts and feelings and hopes and fears and ambitions and love and joy are all laid bare and gifted to the parts of the world that we as humans perceive to be inanimate or inconsequential. But not Jomney. Jomney sees and Jomney loves 
and I love Jomney. You know I'm just gonna wrap this bit up by reading the back which is a review from Lin-Manuel Miranda. Jomney Sun's incredible writing knocks you to the floor breathless then scoops you up and gives you a kiss where it hurts before it occurs to you to cry. Read this book only if you want to feel more alive. Basically in two sentences Lin-Manuel has said everything that I tried to say for this video. Mmm, that wordy, intelligent bastard. Finally, let's leave space, come back down to Earth, and uh, loop back into some whimsy for this last one. And this one won't leave you having an existential crisis, which is nice. So last but absolutely not least, we have Nightlight by Lorena Alvarez. I think I said that right. I hope I said that right. This is a much shorter story, as evidenced by the thickness of this book. Look at that. You could get through this in 20 minutes. But it's more like a beautiful bedtime story or a perhaps darker children's fairy tale than anything that's more super story heavy. And really it's just this lovely little fantasy story about a little girl who has a great imagination and so she can draw her own worlds and thoughts into existence. The character is very sweet and lovable and she's kind of at the core and there's also some very nice themes about creativity and imagination and childhood. But on top of all of that there is the artwork. <laughs> The artwork. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, look at this. Look at this, but then also look at this. What? Ridiculous. Super colourful, infuriatingly stunning artwork. All right, it's just, it's too good. I'm angry now. So if you happen to be in the market for something that will make your eyes incredibly happy very quickly and is also just not too complicated, or if you have kids or any younger siblings, or if you happen to be a teacher who teaches a younger class, this, this could be the book for you. You know, I'm just gonna hold it up again. Look at this bullshit. How dare she? And I think I'm gonna leave it there because otherwise I could accidentally end up reviewing my entire bookcase. Oh no, I've just noticed another really good one. Speaking of comics, I will be at London Comic Con, also known as MCM, at the end of this month, which is May, and I will be womanning the Tom Scar slash Asda movie table on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you happen to be coming by, do stop by and say hello. Thank you for watching and let's have a little chat in the comments about what comics you like, any that I missed out that you want to recommend, any things that you've read lately that you love or hated. Also, if you are London based or are visiting London, do check out Gosh Comics. It's at 1 Berwick Street, nearest station is Leicester Square and this isn't even an ad, it's not even Spawn. It's just, I love that place so much, it's my safe space, and I just have this irrational fear that it's gonna close down one day, so I'm just gonna send as many people their way as I possibly can. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. I'm told the bell button is good as well, so feel free to do that. And then you get to be that exclusive group of people who actually get notifications when I upload a video. You'd think that the subscribe button would do that for you. And just, just have a nice day, really. Have a really nice day. Cool. <laughs> Bye.